Welcome to the InfoWars Nightly News. I'm your host, Melissa Melton, and here's what we have coming up for you on this December 19th, 2012 edition. Tonight, calls from mainstream media and politicians for Obama to revoke the Second Amendment by executive order. Then, Obama advances his plan to bankrupt the coal industry and your family with new CO2 limits and TSA-style sexual assaults come to the highways of America. All that and more tonight on InfoWars Nightly News. Our top story tonight should distress some of you, even if you saw it coming as it did me. Reuters has now openly called for Obama to act as a dictator and ban our guns. In a story they published earlier this week, actually entitled, Even Without Congress, Obama Could Act to Restrict Guns. That's actually what they titled the story. And they go on with a subheading that begins, Unburdened by reelection worries and empowered by law to act without Congress, U.S. President Barack Obama could take action. What American law empowers him to act like a dictator? I'm not really sure what that is. But according to this story, it is now official. America is under an admitted dictatorship. They go on to say, Obama does not need to fear alienating voters who favor gun rights and that he can press ahead without lawmakers and that his administration has the power to issue executive orders or new rules, options that Obama is likely to consider. So let's get this straight. Obama's administration, a body that is administrative only, can now administer executive orders that are circumventing Congress, they're going around the voice of the people, and they can make new rules. I'm not really sure where new rules is actually mentioned in the Constitution, but apparently, according to Reuters, it's in there somewhere. They also go on to discuss the fact that Obama's U.S. Justice Department appointees have been busy studying ideas for gun control ever since the Gabrielle Gifford shooting. And basically, the bottom line on this is the Second Amendment is pretty clear on this point. It says, a well-regulated militia being necessary to the security of a free state, the right of the people to keep and bear arms shall not be infringed, shall not be infringed, period. The whole point of the Second Amendment was to protect us from a total takeover of a tyrannical government, which is the exact kind of tyrannical government that we're seeing do this right now. So. Reuters isn't the only one either. Uh, the media, they're not alone in this. There are lots of political figureheads coming forward to call for Obama's executive orders and executive actions, starting with uh, New York Mayor Michael Bloomberg, who's coming forward to demand Obama takes executive action against our Second Amendment. And he actually went on Meet the Press and said, quote, it's time for the president, I think, to stand up and lead and tell this country what we should do, not go to Congress and say, what do you guys want to do? So apparently Congress has no power now. It's just Obama needs to come out and tell everybody what to do. He's just straight up calling for him to be a dictator. And he actually continues and says, what the president can do is, number one, through executive action, he can order his agencies to enforce the laws more aggressively. This country is supposed to have a system of checks and balances. We have three branches of government, not one. Uh, this is not an executive branch with a dictator sitting on a throne at the top that just rains down rule over everyone, and then a bunch of other random people that don't matter. It's supposed to be a balance of power between three branches of government. So this is outrageous, actually. Continuing on, Connecticut Senator, Senator Joe Lieberman said that if Obama can do something about guns by executive order, God bless him. He actually went on CNN and said, this is about trying to limit access to guns by people who shouldn't have them based on their records and to keep military weapons off the commercial market. If the president can do something now by executive order, God bless him. And the point I just want to make here is that the Connecticut shooter was allegedly using his mother's guns to commit this crime. I've read stories where he tried to get a gun and couldn't, and that the guns he used to perpetrate this were actually his mother's. So all these systems of regulations and checks and balances and all this stuff they're trying to enforce would not have applied here. And it also wouldn't apply because this school was a gun-free zone anyway. He shouldn't have been taking guns there to begin with. The bottom line here is that criminals go and find ways to commit their crimes. They're not abiding by laws. These laws would not have mattered. It would not have made any difference at all what they're trying to do here. This is about power and control of the people and subverting our constitutional rights.
So this isn't about making anybody safe. This is actually about them trying to take away our rights. All these people calling for him to be a dictator, and that's what it's about. And actually, he, Obama traveled to Newtown recently and held another press conference where he wiped away another fake tear, crying over these children when every day he's got drone strikes going on. He, they've killed now upwards of 200 children in Pakistan alone, and we don't see him crying any tears for them. And we've actually put together a special report. We're going to air it right now. Warning, viewer discretion is advised. You are going to see the evidence that President Obama knowingly and consciously orders the murder of men, women, and children, signs death orders where entire weddings or village gatherings are bombed by drones and other aircraft, knowing that children would be killed and simply calling them collateral damage, dehumanizing them down to the word collateral damage. Think of the magnitude of that. We're gonna show you the mainstream news articles where they admit he signs death orders to kill people in cars with their children. Even in the fictional Scarface, Tony Montana won't blow up the car when there's little kids in the back of it. You got to be really evil to do this. And we've just gotten to where it's passe, it's no big deal. And he has massively increased the drone strikes, even since the warmonger George W. Bush. And it is sickening and disgusting that Democrats, because he was given a peace prize, why not give Hitler one or Stalin, because he's trendy, he's liberal, he's supposedly black. It's cool when he kills people and destroys Libya and now uses Al-Qaeda against Syria. It's so sick. And then you have that as a backdrop while he gets up there and fake cries and says, we've got to ban guns. And he's assigned a new task force that outside of Congress is going to call to, to ban guns. And Reuters says, be a dictator, Obama. They came out today, use executive orders and take people semi-autos. They don't need that for hunting. It's not for hunting. It's to protect ourselves from tyranny. And it's just so over the top because with Bush, it was bad enough, but he was just a warmonger. With Obama, you get to hear about how he's like Mahatma Gandhi and Martin Luther King rolled into one. And, and he's this man of peace. And it's so loving what he's doing. And it's sick. So we're going to show you just some in just a few countries of the documented dead children where the Pentagon admits they killed them and the death orders that President Obama has signed. And part of the Twitter feed we're going to use uh, is off of a researcher, Josh Begley, uh, who went and tweeted out, took him days to do it, all of the lethal drone strikes on children that have happened in the last few years. And it is just incredible. And it is hypocrisy on steroids. I would also add that YouTube, we're gonna first air this on InfoWars Nightly News, YouTube will allow images of dead children when it's in mainstream news. The, back in the 60s, they allowed the image of burning children hit with napalm on via CBS, and that helped in the war. Now we're not allowed to see the flag draped coffins. Now, unless it's mainstream news, we can't show you the images of these dead children. So make no mistake, it will be flagged, it will be blocked, it will be banned. So you be sure and get this video when you see it and post it on every channel out there. Because it starts with Obama giving a speech about loving children. It's totally hollow and hypocritical. And then it moves through just some of the children he has directly ordered be killed. And then it just shows some simple mainstream news article photos. But again, because of the context we're putting it in, his hypocrisy, the censors will try to block you seeing something that ended the Vietnam War and could end all of these undeclared illegal wars. We're trying to save children here. Not just the children killed at Sandy Hook, the 20, but the thousands killed by these illegal wars. And so everyone who really cares about children and just doesn't want to buy into the hype in the name of banning guns needs to get this video out to everyone they know. This is a very important piece put together by Rob Dew. The system does not want you to see it. So save it, burn it on disc, show it on local access television, and get it out on every video channel on the web. And when YouTube censors, like they've done in the past, we will simply use their attack on free speech and the truth as a way to get it out to even more people. We use the enemy's actions against them. So here is the report. 
We gather here in memory of 20 beautiful children and six remarkable adults. They lost their lives in a school that could have been any school, in a quiet town full of good and decent people that could be any town in America. Here in Newtown, I come to offer the love and prayers of a nation. I can only hope it helps for you to know that you're not alone in your grief. That our world, too, has been torn apart. That all across this land of ours, we have wept with you. We've pulled our children tight. And you must know that whatever measure of comfort we can provide, we will provide. As a community, you've inspired us, Newtown. In the face of indescribable violence, in the face of unconscionable evil, you've looked out for each other. And you've cared for one another. And you've loved one another. This is how Newtown will be remembered. And with time and God's grace, that love will see you through. But we as a nation, we are left with some hard questions. And we learn that our most important job is to give them what they need to become self-reliant and capable and resilient, ready to face the world without fear. And we know we can't do this by ourselves. It comes as a shock at a certain point where you realize no matter how much you love these kids, you can't do it by yourself. That this job of keeping our children safe and teaching them well is something we can only do together with the help of friends and neighbors, the help of a community, and the help of a nation. And in that way, we come to realize that we bear responsibility for every child because we're counting on everybody else to help look after ours. That we're all parents. That they're all our children. This is our first task, caring for our children. It's our first job. If we don't get that right, we don't get anything right. That's how, as a society, we will be judged. And by that measure, can we truly say, as a nation, that we're meeting our obligations? Can we honestly say that we're doing enough to keep our children, all of them, safe from harm? Can we claim, as a nation, that we're all together there, letting them know that they're loved and teaching them to love in return? Can we say that we're truly doing enough to give all the children of this country the chance they deserve to live out their lives in happiness and with purpose? I've been reflecting on this the last few days. And if we're honest with ourselves, the answer is no. We're not doing enough. And we will have to change. Since I've been president, this is the fourth time we have come together to comfort a grieving community torn apart by mass shootings. Fourth time we've hugged survivors. The fourth time, we've consoled the families of victims. 
And in between, there have been an endless series of deadly shootings across the country, almost daily reports of victims, many of them children, in small towns and big cities all across America. Victims whose, much of the time, their only fault was being in the wrong place at the wrong time. We can't tolerate this anymore. These tragedies must end. And to end them, we must change. If there's even one step we can take to save another child, then surely we have an obligation to try. In the coming weeks, I'll use whatever power this office holds to engage my fellow citizens, from law enforcement to mental health professionals to parents and educators, in an effort aimed at preventing more tragedies like this. Because what choice do we have? We can't accept events like this as routine. Are we really prepared to say that we're powerless in the face of such carnage? That the politics are too hard? Are we prepared to say that such violence visited on our children year after year after year is somehow the price of our freedom? There's only one thing we can be sure of, and that is the love that we have for our children, for our families, for each other. The warmth of a small child's embrace, that is true. The memories we have of them, the joy that they bring, the wonder we see through their eyes, that fierce and boundless love we feel for them, a love that takes us out of ourselves and binds us to something larger. We know that's what matters. We know we're always doing right when we're taking care of them, when we're teaching them well, when we're showing acts of kindness. We don't go wrong when we do that. That's what we can be sure of. Charlotte, Daniel, Olivia, Josephine, Anna, Dylan, Madeline, Catherine, Chase, Jesse, James, Grace, Emily, Jack, Noah, Caroline, Jessica, Benjamin, Evliel, Alice. God has called them all home. For those of us who remain, let us find the strength to carry on and make our country worthy of their memory. That video should be enough to make any person sick. It's disgusting. It is disgusting that he gets up there and wipes away fake tears while he's openly killing other people's children. This video is titled Obama Orders Child Murders, and it's going to go out on one of our sub channels. Please get it out to everybody you know, because this needs to be seen. This guy is a hypocrite, and it's disgusting. And it should make every one of you sick. He's sitting there talking about how society is going to be judged. We're going to be judged on allowing this to happen. This is horrible. Horrible. We're going to go to break. We'll be right back. Christy Hightower here for a Planet InfoWars update. 
I know it's been a little while. I apologize. We have moved studios. We've expanded. There's been a little bit of a, a shift going on. So um, I just want to make this real quick. We've had several contests, actually, um, starting with the Bob Costas thinking that he is, you know, end all to end all, saying, <laughs> saying that the Second Amendment should be restricted. Well, the mission, actually, that I want to talk to you about is a Planet and Forward's mission in the resistance group. And um, guns causing crimes is, is like spoons causing you to get fat. So the mission is for everyone to send a letter to Bob Costas and send him a spoon. And the contest actually is videotaping yourself, writing a letter. Um, now, obviously, uh, there is a little humor in here, so I, I hope to laugh. I expect to laugh at some of these uh, and send him a spoon because we just want him to have piles of spoons. Um, how ridiculous his comments on the Second Amendment were. Uh, so go take that, go take that, and make me laugh. Um, and then the next, actually, that I wanted to talk to you about is in the Infowar video reports. And this we had here in Austin, Texas, the drone mob, where we use the hashtag on Twitter, drone mob. And um, basically, if you were there and you filmed, we want you to go and edit your video. It doesn't even have to be that long, but whoever has the best drone mob video is going to win $1,000. Um, so both of these are video contests. Both of these are just you getting active. Uh, I apologize if you couldn't make it to Austin, but hopefully we'll be getting to do more cool events like this in the future. Um, and also, there's actually on Infowars.com, there's more about the drone mob contest. And exactly the deadline is the 21st, and I want to say it's at midnight. So go check out those details and um, get those awesome videos in because people need to know what we're, what we're up against. The drones are not a joke. This isn't going away. Um, this is an awareness campaign, so keep that in mind as well. And um, lastly, on a little, a little on that lighter note, um, this has kind of been an ongoing romance. I've actually mentioned these two before. Um, Herbic07 and Lady Liberty are both Planet Infowars users, and um, they sent me their picture. They actually have visited each other several times now, and um, I want to say probably six months or so. Um, and they actually met in the Freedom Lovers group there on Planet InfoWars. So it can happen to you. And since we're all moving into the holidays and it's, you know, it's cold, you want somebody to cozy up with, um, especially people that, you know, understand and believe and, and um, are aware like you are. So go check that out. It's not a dud, I promise. You can find love um, <laughs> in this patriot world. Um, so thank you again, Planet InfoWars users, for all you're doing. Uh, hopefully we'll get an Ask Alex segment here soon. Um, keep up the great work and um, keep talking because we're listening. We are back, and uh, they really are trying to come and take our guns. This is about control. The video you just saw, do you really want that man and his standing army to be the only ones in this country that have guns besides criminals? Because that's what these people are asking us to do. And he's going around Congress to do it. And speaking of going around Congress, we have another story here. Panetta, authority of UN, trumps Congress in getting approval for war on Syria. Following the controversy, when last March, Panetta told the Senate Armed Services Committee, our goal would be to seek international permission, and we would come to the Congress and inform you to determine how best to approach this and whether or not we'd want to get permission from Congress. He's backed slowly off of some of those statements, but this time in regards to Syria, he actually said, in this situation, if the international action is taken pursuant to a Security Council resolution or under our tri treaty obligations with regard to NATO, that obviously we would participate with the international community, adding that Congress would only have influence later when it came to questions about funding the effort. 
So there you go. Congress basically has to fund it, but it doesn't matter anything else. So they're basically holding a checkbook on this one. Nothing else here that Congress does really matters. And it's all muddled in semantics, but the bottom line here is our president now believes he can do foreign military intervention, military intervention without any congressional approval. It doesn't matter. And actually, Representative Walter Jones was on the Alex Jones radio show recently, and he made the comment that Obama is guilty of war crimes. We're going to take a look at that clip. Sir, what do you predict as a senior member of the House of Representatives? What is going to happen? And if folks just tune in, Representative Walter B. Jones of North Carolina is our guest. What is your response going to be if in the new year, maybe even before, Obama just says, hey, uh, I'm going to use executive order to take people semi-autos? Well, I'm going to say this, Alex. I think that the American people and the Congress uh, will challenge in the federal courts uh, because, again, in my humble opinion, I think that this is an overreach by this administration. And I will further say and remind the, the listeners that when he went into Libya, Jonathan Turley, who is a constitutional law professor at George Washington University, joined, uh, led the effort in the courts with Dennis Kucinich, Ron Paul, Walter Jones, Tim Johnson, and a couple of Democrats, I can't remember their name now, to con continue the challenge that this president uh, has bypassed Congress and you cannot. And I think it's going to take a major court fight uh, and we've got to have, you know, major leaders of our country, including people like you, Alex Jones, to say enough is enough. Uh, because if not, this president has just, and, and, and I was upset with George Bush when we went into Iraq, so I want to be somewhat uh, partisan on this. But I'm going to tell you this, that uh, what Mr. Obama has done, starting with a number of issues, but particularly when he came, didn't even come to Congress and bombed Libya, if, if, if that that's, 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 an, that's an international war crime. And this isn't the only place where Obama is showing what kind of dictator he actually plans to be. In this other article we have by Paul Joseph Watson, Obama advances plan to bankrupt coal industry with new CO2 limits. EPA will enforce disastrous measures by dictatorial fiat, a theme we're seeing here repeatedly. During an interview with the San Francisco Chronicle in January 2008, when he was still a senator, Obama stated, if somebody wants to build a coal-powered plant, they can. It's just that it will bankrupt them. Now the enforcement of new measures, which will force new plants to cut CO2 emissions by 50 percent and mandate investment in unaffordable technologies to bury carbon emissions underground, marks the realization of Obama's 2008 promise to bankrupt the coal industry. And make no mistake, ladies and gentlemen, this isn't just about bankrupting the coal industry. This is also about bankrupting you and your family because utility bills are now doubling in many cities across the country. So this isn't just going to affect some coal power plant somewhere on the edge of town. This is going to affect you in your living room every time you want to turn up the heat or turn the air conditioning on. And it's going to become a major component of most family budgets just to try and pay for your utility bills now. And Basically, the whole bottom line here is it's going to lower America's standard of living. The quality of living is going to go down in order to save the earth. And actually, Aaron Dykes has an article in the newest edition of the InfoWars magazine, which we have right here, which, real quick, I just want to point out, you see on here, you see Obama sitting on the American flag, and it says, this man wants your guns. Alex actually thought of this cover right after the election happened. So this is something that we've known is coming for a long time, but it's, it's chilling still to, to see this image and then see what's going on today. But in this article, Aaron Dykes writes, why Obama will revive the push for CO2 taxes and the green agenda is about control and profits, not about saving the environment. And he discusses how estimates show these regulations alone would cost the United States economy some $700 billion. And the scope of involvement of globalist offshore entities that control the big banks mean the system is gamed from the beginning and that these regulations amount to a virtual racket when it comes to insider trading of information on this. And whatever concerns we have about our environment, he continues, we will unintentionally be enabling our economic domination and the demise of the global economy through dangerous regulations like the one Obama is now beginning to unfold. And so either way, as you can see, we're, it's a dictatorship. It's a dictatorship on all levels, economically and with our rights and with our con congressional powers to declare war. Everything, all levels are being attacked right now.
And so moving on to more corruption, this was posted in Zero Hedge. 36 UBS bankers to be implicated in LIBORgate, criminal charges to be filed. And apparently UBS has as many as three dozen bankers that are now reportedly implicated in the fixing of these interest rates and is close to finalizing a deal with UK, US and Swiss authorities in which the bank will pay close to 1.5 billion in fines and its Japanese securities subsidiary will plead guilty to US criminal offenses. But he goes on to add that the bank will not lose its ability con to conduct business in Japan, which I think is ridiculous. And real quick, this whole scandal is about the fixing of interest rates. It's the interest rates that banks use to loan money to one another, and that trickles down to everything from credit cards to mortgages to car loans. It trickles down to all of us. And as you see with all of these, they keep trotting out these patsies that are going to go down. It's not high-level people. It's going to be low-level people, and they're going to pay a lot of fines. Those fines are going to the government, though. Those fines aren't coming back to the victims. They're not coming back to us. It's just money getting paid to the government. So it's just very corrupt. And if, and if that's not bad enough, let's move on to some police state news. This is really hard to stomach. It's, it's a little bit disgusting. I just want to let you guys know before I get into it. Women suing state troopers over roadside cavity searches. Two Texas women had filed a federal lawsuit against two state troopers and their department head after being forced to undergo a humiliating roadside body cavity search during a routine traffic stop last July. We actually have the dash cam footage of that event. Let's take a look at that clip. So you're telling me that there's no man one in that car? To the best of my knowledge, no, there's not. Okay. Is there anything hidden on your person? On my person. In your, in, on your person. In your oh. shoes, in your underwear, no. anything like that? <laughs> no. Uh, Do you have anything on your disturbing. It's really hard to watch. She's really... Mm. Well, there you have it. Actually, that is a truncated version for the interest of time, but if you go to InfoWars and check out this story, Women Suing State Troopers Over Roadside Cavity Searches, you can watch the full clip. And that last woman, she's actually in her pants for quite some time there. It is really, really hard to watch. And according to DFW, NBC DFW, the lawsuit further alleges that Trooper Kelly Hellison performed searches on both women, touching both their anus and vaginas without changing latex gloves between searches. And if you watch the full clip, you'll see that. She did not change gloves that entire time. She went into the pants of the first woman, down the back of her pants, then the front, went inside of her body, then did not change gloves, brought the second woman over, went down the back of her pants, and then again the front in that order, did not change gloves the whole time. They did that right there on the roadside in front of God and everybody. And this is all because the first officer claimed to smell marijuana in the car. But in the end, after humiliating these women, invading their bodies on the side of the road in front of everybody, they didn't find anything. They didn't find anything in the car, nothing in these women. And, and now imagine that's your sister or your mother or your grandmother or your daughter and now realize that's the America we're living in now. This isn't land of the free anymore. I hate to say it, I hate to be the bringer of that news on this newscast, but this is the land of the enslaved. And it's really hard to watch that, but that's what's gonna start happening to people all over the place now. You're suspected of something, they'll go inside your body on the side of the road in front of everyone. So, uh, it's just, it wrenches my stomach. Anyway, finally tonight, a local restaurant owner actually came under a lot of fire recently for some racist comments he made on his Facebook page. Noodle house owner, I don't care if a bunch of white kids get killed. A racist comment by an Asian noodle house owner has caused a firestorm of controversy when he went on his Facebook page and remarked about the Connecticut school shooting, I don't care if a bunch of white kids got killed. He says, I'm failing to give a damn about the Connecticut shooting and he doesn't care if they get killed. And he actually doubled down and went on to say, if you don't like me or my opinions, I suggest you unfriend me and F off. I'm pretty much sick of people telling me what to think, how to think, or how to feel today. If you don't like my foods, F off and eat someplace else. Well, our own Jakari Jackson and David Knight decided to go down to the Thai noodle house and speak to the owner, try to get some of his comments, and also speak to people about this. Let's take a look at that special report. Angry, racist, and profanity-laden Facebook posts from a restaurant owner in Austin, Texas has appalled people across the nation. After saying, 
I'm failing to give a damn about the Connecticut shooting. I don't care if a bunch of white kids got killed. He pushed back on his Facebook critics, saying, If you don't like me or my opinions, I suggest you to unfriend me and F off. I'm pretty much sick of these people telling me what to think, how to think, or how to feel today. And if you don't like my foods, F off and eat someplace else. Well, a lot of people have taken him at his word, and boycotts are being organized on Facebook and elsewhere. In the original post, after he said he didn't care if a bunch of white kids got killed, though, he also said, Why should I care about people who don't give a damn about me? And he said, Nobody cares when minority groups get shot or when Israel launches missiles at a school in Gaza. So we wanted to talk to him and to give him a chance to explain his comments or to apologize. And here's what happened. Hi. Hi. Are you the owner? No, okay. I'm working here. Okay. Is he here? Uh, no, he's he not anymore over here. You mean murder? Yeah. Is there some place where we could talk to him? I'm from InfoWars, and no. the night from InfoWars, we no, wanted to uh, help him. He put some stuff up on Facebook. And I know that, but I don't know anything about him. Okay. But we quit. We gave up that four or three months ago. He gave up what? He gave up over here. Oh, he no longer owns no, this? Yeah, he's not here over here. Okay, but it said that he was the owner. Uh, I mean, he no. posted it on the Facebook site? No, I cannot even mention anything about him. I don't know. Okay. So. Is there an owner that I could talk to or to clarify that? Because uh, is there a manager we could talk to? So apparently the store is now ownerless and without a manager, if the guy that we talked to can be believed. And while we were there, another local news crew was trying to track him down and had also gone to his house and didn't find him there either. A subsequent post on him from Facebook said, I think it's time for me to get out of this city for a while for a nice hike down south. So perhaps he is out of town. What we're trying to do is give him a chance to explain his angry comments. And certainly we understand the blowback and the anger and the double standard as to how people react to children being killed in Connecticut versus people being killed in Gaza, as he alluded to, or in uh, Pakistan where 168 children have been killed with both Bush and Obama's drone strikes. There is an unequal concern about children, and, and this is the way that it blows back with irrational hatred that we see in this Facebook post from the owner of uh, Thai Noodles, who they've told us is no longer the owner and he's not there. But let's see what some other people think about the children killed in Connecticut, about the children killed by our president, and about gun control. What are your thoughts about the most recent school shooting in Connecticut? I was definitely shocked by it. Um, one thing that I did think was interesting in, is how much people paid attention to it. I'm glad that it did catch main media and that people definitely took it seriously. And I think the government did a good job of that as well. I mean, it's pretty atrocious that anyone would shoot a bunch of um, a bunch of school children, and I can't even imagine what was going through that individual's head. It's very hard to think about. In fact, I'm going to get choked up right now. I'm a mother. However, the, the, the product from this is you've got everybody angry and upset yelling about guns and gun control. To be honest, it just, it's sad. I don't really think too much about it. I just know, like, I mean, like, the gun control thing is, to be honest, I don't know. But what's your personal opinion of guns? Do you, are you for automatic guns, semi-automatic guns? You use a semi-automatic rifle. Um, I'm against um, any sort of automatic kind of weapons. I think those are unnecessary, except for maybe military use. But um, I don't think guns should be restricted overall. Uh, these kids, that are, that are, I, I don't know how they're getting their hands on these semi-automatic weapons. Right. I mean, like, I would be all for the semi-automatic weapons being repealed. You don't, you don't, need, you, you don't need to hunt with semi-automatic weapons. If I can clarify, Miss, are you talking about semi-automatic or fully automatic? Both. Not putting out, like, guns that shouldn't be out there, you know, like, I guess semi-automatics, like, just automatic weapons and stuff like that shouldn't be out there. I don't believe that complete gun control will solve the issue because, to me, guns are inanimate objects. Inanimate objects don't make criminals, just as knives don't make killers. I mean, and but I do believe that there should be some stricter laws, stricter rules, and who can obtain firearms. Mental health screening, uh, particularly when it comes to firearms. Oh gosh, that would be wonderful. That would be excellent. I, I, I would be all for mental health screening before giving a firearm to a person. Have you heard anything, you know, just around town, people talking about gun control, or about mental health screens, about shootings in general? Uh, I just hear like they're putting more like metal detectors in high schools and things like that. There is a recent uprise in the, the link between the mentally ill and the prison systems. It seems recently that 
in the U.S., there is a large influx of the mentally ill being sent to prison because it's the best way of treatment. Right. And I feel like there should be an alternative way. You shouldn't, just because you're mentally ill doesn't make you a criminal automatically. You should be offer the proper resources. Now we hear a lot about uh, shootings and violence here in the U.S., but not so much in other countries, where in Pakistan, for instance, uh, since Obama became president, over 100 children have died in drone strikes. What do you think about that? Oh, it's ho it, 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 that's horrible, too. And and the reason we don't hear about it a lot is I get upset at, at the, the uh, news media of the United States. Right. We're obsessed with personalities, and did Britney Spears uh, uh, go to this restaurant or not. Like in Pakistan where over 100 kids have died in drone strikes since Obama was taken office. Do you have any thoughts about that? Uh, to be honest, I don't, I don't really know too much about that. You know, I, I'm, I'm not too educated on that. As a country, we should, we should respect what happens in other countries. It's, it's on their soil. But we should definitely offer, offer assistance and offer, it, we should definitely acknowledge that it's happening. No matter what restrictions are put on guns, if people want to get guns, they're going to get them. So it's people need to remember it's who has the guns, not that guns are an evil. And that does it for the news portion of our broadcast tonight. And now let's go to the quote of the day. The accumulation of all power, legislative, executive, and judiciary in the same hands may justly be pronounced the very definition of tyranny, James Madison. And that's the very tyranny that the Second Amendment is meant to protect us against. Right now, what we're seeing unfold here today, this dictatorship that Obama is trying to assert. Now, we're getting ready to go to a special report from Alex Jones, Obama caught in gun hoax. But stick around after break because I'm going to be interviewing George Bliss, the hacker who came to our drone mob and was able to hack our drone. Stick around. Finally, tonight on InfoWars Nightly News, I want to lay out some of the basic statistics and facts from the Justice Department itself and the FBI. They do not publicize these statistics that crime has been dropping, violent crime for more than 20 years and accelerating the last five as gun ownership is proliferating. And that's why you're seeing this coordinated attack on the Second Amendment right now and waving the bloody shirt of these poor uh, children at Sandy Hook. That's why you're seeing this type of exploitation, is because the system knows the culture doesn't trust the corrupt foreign occupational banks or government. They know we're awakening. And I gotta tell you, I've been studying this Sandy Hook situation more and more. It's looking like a fully staged operation. And we're compiling the information right now, but separately what we know is staged is the hoax that mass shootings are increasing or that violent crime is increasing when the opposite is the truth. But first off, look at this article out of Reuters. Even without Congress, Obama could act to restrict guns. And it goes into basically what Bloomberg and others have said. He's going to use executive orders and ATF rules. And they say, by law, he can do this. Congress makes the laws. So they're now just saying with no citation, because they're Reuters, they don't have to. Oh, by law, he can take your guns. It's like saying, by law, Stalin can arrest you with no law. So they're, they're, they're begging him to become Caesar. Three times Julius Caesar, the first dictator of Rome, the tyrant, refused the crown. And, and, and so it's like, oh, gee, I don't want to do that. And here's our article at Infowars.com. Reuters calls for Obama to act as dictator to ban guns. And then it goes through all the other calls. Very important article at Infowars.com. He is now appointing Biden, the tyrant, uh, to call for a new federal task force where they get a few puppet governors and people to sign on, a few House and Senate members to say, well, our commission, not Congress, has called to ban all semi-autos. And then in one month, they will call for the ban of semi-autos and the actual physical confiscation of them. So this is the incredibly serious uh, situation that we are now facing. Before I get to these statistics, I want to point out Wikipedia's entry, which has a good bibliography at the bottom. Uh, breaking down how they passed the 68 Gun Control Act before you could buy anything you wanted at stores and we had much lower crime rates with no ID. They used Lee Harvey Oswald and the supposed lone, lone gunman killing of JFK. We now know that was totally staged. They used the Robert F. Kennedy killing to finally pass it that year and the killing of Martin Luther King, which we now know in even court cases and congressional reports, all three were staged by black ops and the shadow government. So my point is, 
even the encyclopedia admits they got the 68 Gun Control Act rammed through on the back of political assassinations. Hey, public, you should turn your guns in because lone nuts are killing presidential candidates, presidents, and civil rights activists. And then in all the cases, they've had federal and state court cases and congressional reports finding there were conspiracies in all three cases. Look it up. So would they stage Sandy Hook? You bet your butt they would. And they've done it over and over again. And Sandy Hook is showing all of those key signs. Now, finally, let's go over some of the statistics here. Here is the FBI numbers from 2011 just released last week. They don't release these until a year after the year had ended to compile these off of local crime statistics. And believe me, they don't want to advertise these. This is key information to get out. Violent crime. Go to FBI.gov and type in crime statistics for yourself. Says right here that, and, and I've underlined it, number of offenses of violent crimes, aggravated violent crimes, assaults, shootings, home invasions, down, and you go through the other aggravated type crime, uh, property crime, home invasions, plunging. V the graph follows the other graphs right online. And when you look at the gun ownership graphs and gun sale graphs increasing the last five, six years when this is accelerated, as guns go up, just as Professor Lott found in his research, then published in More Guns, Less Crime, as gun ownership goes up, crime, violent crime goes down. What crime has gone up? Stealing copper out of a warehouse, uh, breaking into a car, breaking into a car where there's no person there and they see a purse or stealing your, your purse or your wallet when you go to the bathroom at the restaurant, that's increasing. The criminals will not now engage in violent attacks like they used to. Rapes are down. And if you look at the maps of this at the FBI site, it's all the areas that have more gun ownership. Crimes increase in Chicago and New York where they've taken the guns. But let's look at England. This has been compiled by European Union's own numbers. Gun control fail. UK has highest violent crime rate in Europe. It's more than doubled in the 15 years since a total gun ban. And if you look at the numbers, again, they lead, well, not, not just Europe, but Australia, South Africa, Sweden, Belgium, Canada, Finland, Netherlands, Luxembourg, and France. But who has lowest crime? Switzerland, where they make you own automatic weapons by law. And they've got local bunkers with hand grenades and rocket launchers for the general public, and nobody dare invade them, not even Hitler. So you've got those numbers. I uh, thought I would also show you, again, Daily Mail, the most violent country in Europe. Britain is also worse than South Africa and the U.S. in general stabbings and muggings and killings. Not guns, because the criminals don't have guns to do it. It's baseball bats, cudgels, and knives. So there is uh, those statistics. Mexico, total gun ban for the citizens. 50,000 dead the last few years. Highest crime rate in the world. Total gun ban for the uh, citizens. The, the government's all mafia, along with drug gangs, killing each other. So there is... Uh, that group of reports and those statistics are public. So that's the facts. Get this video out for everyone you know to know the truth. Let them see the statistics and the facts for themselves. So when they see the news and they're announcing crime wave, mass shooting wave, we're all dead, it's over. They need to understand it's just like the movie Jaws in the 70s. You can look up these news articles. For two years, more than half the people wouldn't go to resorts and go on the ocean. This happened all over the world. And they had to run public service announcements going, great whites only kill a few people a year. There is no metal shark in the water. They're creating a total mind control hoax, just like with Jaws, about these mass shootings. Yes, the 20 poor dead children, very sad some psychiatric Prozac head killed them, if you believe the official story. Very sad, but taking our guns won't protect us. The globalists are taking your guns and trying to get them, and they've taken them everywhere else because they want to enslave you. It's that simple, it's elementary. Recently, the Harvard School of Health looked at more than a dozen scientific studies concerning fluoride and confirmed what countless other scientists have been documenting for decades. Sodium fluoride in the body reduces IQ and increases cancers. You see, the aluminum industry and the fertilizer industries would have to pay to store all the toxic waste they produce, but instead they get our counties and cities to pay to put the poison in our water. 
It's not just fluoride we're getting, but lead, mercury, arsenic, the list goes on and on. And a lot of this toxic waste comes from China. Unfortunately, fluoride and its derivatives are only one of hundreds of toxins being added to our drinking water. We're battling the globalist on so many fronts. Health is an area where we can all take control of our lives, and it all starts with that basic building block of water. It is time to purify our family's water. The Pro Pure Filtration System with added fluoride filters is the best system for my research to protect you and your family. Infowarstore.com already has the lowest prices on Pro Pure water filtration. But until December 10th, we are going to offer 15% off the already lowest price. I know what I'm giving my family this Christmas Pro Pure. Go to Infowarstore.com and get 15% off the already lowest price out there with the code WATER15. WATER15, and you get 15%. 15% off at InfoWarsStore.com. Alex Jones here with a message that could revolutionize health in this country. Going back about a year and a half ago, I began to learn about the incredible health effects of Longevity products. Aaron Dykes lost 92 pounds. We're going to show you some before and afters. Aaron Break down what happened, your story. I've worked really hard with diet and exercise to try to lose weight, but I just didn't get the results. It just didn't happen. Then I saw what you were doing with InfoWarsTeam.com. I wasn't even trying to lose weight, but I got it because I wanted to feel better energy. I wanted that nutrition. Didn't even understand how that could kickstart my own weight loss goals, but the products did that for me. I found myself suddenly losing weight, more energetic, wanting to exercise, wanting to eat the right foods. And they don't even advertise it as weight loss. I want to challenge our radio listeners to go to InfoWarsTeam.com. Sign up as a distributor and get wholesale pricing discounts at InfoWarsTeam.com. Welcome back. I'm here joined by George Bliss. He was the drone hacker who came out to our drone mob and was able to take over one of our drones using free software with, within minutes. So, hi, George. Welcome How to the show. How are you? It's good to see you again. So, first, just tell us, like, what you did. What you did when you came down. You brought your laptop. We, people are showing up. They're bringing drones. They're bringing stuff. You came with a table and a laptop. Tell us about it. Um, well, I came down to demonstrate that um, in the end that uh, all the technology that's being used against us can uh, easily be disabled. Um, there aren't a whole lot of systems that the government can use that, uh, you know, aren't originating from civilian technology or understanding or academics. So when I heard about your event down at Silker Park, I thought it'd be fun to go out there and uh, bring my laptop down there basically to demonstrate that um, I could do something a little bit different. I was hoping I'd be the only one there with that idea. You were the only one there with that idea, that's for sure. So I like to look at the negative space of things, you know, uh, kind of like the equal opposite, and I thought that might be interesting to come down there. I know you guys were making a great statement about how these drones are going to be real prevalent and um, that uh, they're cheap and easy to find and uh, so every police department across the country has been signing on to uh, to buy these of all different shapes and sizes and uh, I just wanted my message to be that um, that they're not going to take these technologies and use them really back against us because they all originate in completely peaceful and uh, civilian technologies in the end. Well, that's how they always sell it to us. They sell it to us as helpful and, and good at first, and then it's twisted and perverted and turned against us. But tell us about what you actually did while you were there. Well, uh, using some software, um, a lot of people are familiar now with Linux, and using that software, which uh, Linux is an open source operating system, it's kind of like getting Windows but not having to pay for it. Um, it's a software by the people, for the people, if you will, the democracy of computing. And um, 
This software allowed me to view more information about the Wi-Fi environment uh, around the laptop. And so um, using those tools, basically, and anybody can do so this. This is free. This is a free software you went and got easily off the Internet. Didn't Absolutely. have to pay for it, nothing. You just went and got it. Right, exactly. I even borrowed the laptop, so I, I didn't. So it was completely didn't free. <laughs> didn't cost you anything. Didn't cost me a dime to come down there and do that, so it was fun. But um, basically, using some tools, just software, anybody can learn how to use them. Uh, they're pretty well developed. Uh, I was hoping somebody had a Wi-Fi drone out there. They're not all, of course, flown with the Wi-Fi, but you guys happen to bring yours down there. I saw that iPad, and I knew I was in business <laughs> from the get. Yeah, we did. And uh, so I, I pulled it up on there, and um, I essentially told the drone that it no longer wished to receive communication from the controller or be a part of its network. And so what we saw was your drone, uh, it's one of those four rotor drones and it has the autonomous hummer, hover mode on it. And uh, so when we severed the connection, it just kind of went to being a real drone, which is just kind of like flying into the wind. It tried to, you know, keep itself in the same spot. Yeah, they couldn't control it. And they couldn't land it. Yeah, I was hoping it'd be something dramatic, you know, like 10, 10 drones falling out of the sky. But the way you guys set up the demonstration, and especially the way you, the video was presented on uh, Infowars and, and PrisonPlanet.tv, uh, I really like the message. That's what I was trying to say. Well, I, I mean, a lot of people have come out and said, this is just a toy, and we shouldn't really be concerned that you were able to do this. However, these same toys are the same toys that law enforcement all over the place are getting, and then they're upgrading it using our taxpayer dollars and turning that against us. It's the same kind of level of stuff. So, I mean, it, I think it's pretty concerning. Not only that, but that drone has a high-definition camera on it, and it can be controlled by an iPad. So your neighbor can go get one and zoom it over to your yard, and we'll get into that in a minute, but they don't have any privacy obligations. They can do that. that that's creepy enough, even for a toy, I think. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I mean, you know, but then to have the government have that same technology and then weaponize it, I mean, it's not a toy anymore when it's got, you know, a taser on it or something. Absolutely, so. and that's happening now. I've seen it. Um, you know, I think that the biggest issue here, that the easiest way to define where the line uh, is being crossed here for people if they don't already realize it is what they used to call um, expectation of privacy and um, with drones in the sky at high altitude and cameras and uh, all of the number of agencies that want to get involved with this um, you know there used to be expectation of, of privacy in your backyard even if your fence was six or eight feet you know and there were some vantage points um, that was anything that occurred there was considered private and I think that what you're describing, I'm, I'm sure all of the laws have already changed to support their actions, um, although it, I'm sure abstractly. But um, I don't think that there's really any expectation of privacy left. I would like to hear what the government's uh, description or definition of expectation of privacy is at this point. Well, we're actually going to get into that because uh, the FAA has actually come out and said that there is no expectation of privacy. We have that. Actually, I want to show you several uh, articles here. We'll just kind of go over briefly because I think they all speak to the point here Absolutely. of what we're dealing with. Okay, first one is Bill Clear's path for 30,000 surveillance drones over the U.S in the next 10 years, and this is the FAA announcing they feel that there's going to be a, a, at least 30,000 drones in our skies over the next decade. And then this also came out, and we just spoke about this, but FAA drone operators have zero privacy obligations, and it actually says that they came out and said our primary mission is safety. And so, therefore, they're acknowledging that there's privacy concerns, but they're, they're not saying they would mandate anything that would uh, force drone operators to follow any kind of privacy rules. So basically, there, there aren't any. And then, next I have T Texas College hacks drone in front of Department of Homeland Security. And this was here in Austin. These, these students were able to, using $1,000 in parts, they built what's called a spoofer. Mm -hmm. And they were able to take control of multiple drones in front of the Department of Homeland Security and fly them wherever they wanted to. So that's lovely. And then all of these things came out just last week, right after our drone mob, so we couldn't even talk about them at the time, but we can now. I, Iran says it can make a copy of the captured CIA drone. You had mentioned this and when we had talked at the drone mob about how uh, Iran was able to take control of our supposedly top secret, top stealth drone. Now they've got it, and now they're saying openly they can make a copy of it. 
So that's wonderful. <laughs> and then this came out right around the same time. Next generation U.S. drone is now equipped with a death ray laser. <laughs> it's like you hear that and you're thinking, this is a movie. This is Star Trek. This is Star Wars. No, it's not. It's, this is really happening. This is DARPA having death ray lasers with unlimited magazines on drones now. And they're saying they're in the final development stage. So that's great. <sighs> then we have professors coming out saying drones are going to be able to kill with human, um, human assistance. The Pentagon has come out actually to say there's going to be a human behind every robot that, that kills someone, but that doesn't really make me, oh, that makes it better. But no, they're, they're, they're going towards autonomy here. Absolutely. So that's pretty horrifying. And then finally, this is the last one, and this should really at least, if none of these other articles pique people's interest, this last one really piqued mine. The do-it-yourself armed drone. <laughs> Yay, this is from the ACLU. A man uh, posted his experiments with an armed drone that he was able to make on a small budget that he, he came up with himself. So there you go. This is what's going on now here in America in the world of drones. And, and I know then we've got people coming out on our, when I did my interview with you and showed our video of you hacking the drone, they're like, oh, that's just a toy. It's no big deal. It is a big deal when you look at all of this evidence together in one big pile. I mean, why aren't people more concerned about their civil liberties under this kind of situation? Well, I think the main issue is a lot of people aren't getting the facts. Um, that's why I support what Alex is doing here and what you guys are doing here, all of you at InfoWars, is you're helping to get out these facts. Um, this isn't the type of news. You, I mean, I was having trouble just keeping track of all this paper. And that's just a few. I could have gone on and on. I could have printed you an archive. I could have printed so much paper it took up like five trees. And I saw the guy it was that amazing. took 12 hours to Twitter every single drone attack. Since, he took 12 uh, hours to Twitter every single drone attack and only got to 2010. He thought it was going to take him 10 minutes. Wow. Um, our I first no drone idea. attack on record, I think, was 2002 under the Bush administration. He's like, this will take me 10 minutes. It'll be no big deal. And then he's t 12 hours later still wasn't done. Yeah, it's that's amazing. unbelievable. I had no idea, and I consider myself a pretty conscious individual. So, I mean, uh, to hear that uh, was pretty astonishing, you know, to get a grasp on the size of the numbers. So I think that's the main issue is people um, don't get the facts. Second of all is I think that they're detached from what happens outside the country. Um, you know, a lot of what's happened with drones up to this point, which has supported the development by DARPA of these different devices, is that people aren't told what their uh, billions upon billions of tax dollars are going to fund and research ahead of time. People don't get a choice or, or a say in that. People um, don't get a say in whether these technologies are used in war. And once we have the technology developed in war, it almost seems intentional, and then practiced in war outside the country, it seems like a very subvertive way to get our population to pay for this and then take it and actually use it back against us. Once they're done with the war or the development, whichever one is shorter, um, then it seems they deploy a civilian version of this and then eventually remilitarize that same version right back on our, um, their, own popu their own population. Well, yeah, we're sending all of these predator drones over to the Middle East. We're bombing people and, and killing innocent civilians and children while we do that. And and then we've got all these surveillance drones coming here and people, there's like a disconnect there where people think that we are only ever going to have these armed drones way far away across the ocean in other countries. We're never going to see that here. However, the Department of Homeland Security just got done buying, what was it, like 14 new Predator drones for like $443 million. So now on record they have 24. It's probably more than that. I mean, and they're saying they're only going to use that to patrol our border with Mexico. But, how, you know, how do we know that? We don't know anything. I mean, this this government is crazy, the things that they do and, and everything that we continue to see every single day. So it's like I don't understand the disconnect there where people think, oh, it's just going to be, it's just going to be surveillance. It's going to be way high in the sky, and they're just going to watch us. So, and I'm not doing anything wrong, so it's totally fine. I would tell people to look at the Fuji blimp film with Alex uh, when he was in New York. I think even just watching him go up to a cop and say, "Hey, what's the blimp doing?" The guy looks up in the sky. He's a cop, you know, and probably checking, watching over things, you know. And I, that's just un-American to me, and I, I don't. I mean, I almost don't know how to respond as far as how people don't realize that um, the word war does not give anybody the right to go anywhere in the world, especially not from America with our money and our equipment. 
and in our name and to take away someone's right to be heard in a court somewhere to have evidence brought against them and that the same people the fact that the same people that rob others of their right to what we call habeas corpus to have your day in court and heard evidence heard against you um, is it just incomprehensible to me that um, they got this far that from the first drone it's missile incremental fired, or so. even before that drone was ever built why there weren't people that got to make a decision on that that are real people americans by the constitution uh... to say no we could never use this because we don't have the framework to do so without infringing upon someone's rights and i think that's horrible i think that was the day this was all yeah well i didn't actually include this article in there but i actually wrote an article also about how we have a drone caucus I don't know if you have heard of the drone caucus that we have, but the House of Representatives has a 60-member drone caucus, and they've claimed themselves to be the drone industry's, quote, industry's voice on Capitol Hill. That's what they call themselves. And they've taken $8 million in drone-related campaign contributions over the last four years. So so there's, there's your part of the answer, I think, to the question you just posed, because these people are taking money, and these are the people that are behind pushing for all of this new regulation that's going through without securing our, our civil liberties first at all, or as you spoke of. And, and, and even that, that even speaks to a greater issue, I think, too. Where is it written anywhere that America is the only country that can have these weaponized drones and have you know, this kill list, Obama has a kill list, um, which came out in the New York Times. And where is it written that America is the only one that can do that? I mean, I'm reading articles all the time about how China's growing their drone army, um, UK is getting more and more drones. All these other countries are starting to get drones too. And who, who's to say they can't have a drone kill list and fly a drone over here and bomb somebody here? I mean, who's to say that? Right. You know, who, when, did, when did the raw law get written that only we can do that? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, these are still machines of war, you know, and uh, I understand the need of the military, and I don't want to take away from that, that when there is no time to make a decision and you are rightfully in a zone of war, that you do what you have to to protect the people that you love, whether that be your family back home, the guys around you. Um, but at the same time, I, I see a huge issue with taking war machines, no matter how you paint them, um, and bringing them back home and operating them over our skies. I think that the spirit of posse comitatus, which has been completely subverted at this point, um, but the spirit of posse comitatus is, is that no local police force, no governing force within our own borders should have military level technology. I don't believe that the police department should have a helicopter, period because I believe that is a military tool. I don't believe that they should have uh, cars that are indestructible and use very, um, you know, they've seen some with the paint so light on them now that you can't even, you know, tell their police. It's very secret police, you know, the lights are all hidden into the car now. Um, you know, even to go so far as to say a SWAT team, um, because uh, those are all military technologies. Now, one thing that's always been kind of the untouchable of, uh, you know, where you could still call yourself an American, but agree that on the absolute highest levels, yes, the NSA could look at anything that they wanted to, because if there was a threat, and a threat can originate from one person with an ideology, but if there was a threat from that person, that they would be able to stop them no matter what, but that they would never, ever use that against a civilian because a civilian but would they have are to have doing their days that. in court and they would have to expose their method of gathering that information. And it's kind of like a, a give and take. If they're going to use that against a citizen, it better be so something so great that when they kind of show their hand as to how they got that information, that you know the next guy would know about it. And it would weaken them, at least some, for having that ability. But none of that's happening. I mean, we have these huge NSA data hubs. They're being built 
everywhere on our on our dollar, and they're not they're collecting information on all of us all the time, and they're not exposing any of that. I mean, I went down to an NSA database with um, Jakari Jackson, and we just tried to film from the outside, and it was across the street from a Walmart, and you know they came out and tried to they said we weren't detained, but they kept us for half an hour trying to ask us what we were doing, and it's across the street from a Walmart. It's not exactly a secret location, but back to these drone strikes. Also, I mean, there's no due process on any of this either that we've seen. We're not seeing any of that. In fact, the White House won't even come out and admit we're doing these drone strikes. So the New York Times can do a whole expose on Obama's drone kill list, and yet the White House still won't even admit there is a drone strike program happening, even though it's on record everywhere. There's no due process for any of this. Right. So, I mean, I, they're, I don't think they're going to be showing any of their hands. In fact, they're just going to keep hiding even more stuff over time. Right. But, I, mean, I mean, yeah, absolutely. But I think that the, that the game we're playing now is that they don't have to hide their hand anymore. They're playing face up on us and that they have such a strong hand that we can't bluff them, you know? They don't think that uh, they need to hide much anymore, only that it be said somewhere so that Well, it's just drawing it up incrementally so we can all get used to this police Absolutely. state, surveillance state, at this 1984 point. being watched all the time. Yeah. Well, I just had one other question. I wanted to see what your thoughts were on this. Mm. So you came and you hacked a drone. It was a Wi-Fi drone. Mm. Um, that's one of the lower level drones. I mean, we went and purchased at the mall. Sure. But we've also seen Iran hack our top secret stealth drone. I mean, that's at the highest level, of, supposedly the highest level of drone technology and it's hacked and they've got it now they're saying we have it we're going to make copies what are you going to do about it i mean Absolutely. so we've we've seen it at all levels now low levels high levels do you think that over time as more and more of these things are entering our skies that this ability to just hack is going to kind of move inward from both levels and just kind of cover the ground on being able to take these things over? Well, in computer theory and, and uh, just mathematics, it is impossible to make anything unbreakable. Um, they're working on something called quantum cr cryptography. Other than that, nothing is unhackable. And so it's only a matter of time Great. before. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it, there's Yay. only two components. You have wireless signals so that you can do this remotely, and you have some basic form of encryption, which Again, uh, it's not ever foolproof based on the numbers. You can't ever make it foolproof unless one single quanta is being measured and connected between the device and the sender, then there's always going to be vulnerabilities. I mean, that's a mathematical certainty. So what kind of America you think we're going to be seeing in the next 10 years? I know I said one more question. Not this one. I promise you that. Not this one, but... Uh, I hope not. <laughs> I mean, uh, this is the way they would like it. You know, uh, if, if they were continue, uh, to continue unimpeded, then um, we would see, well, that's why I think a lot of people are referencing Skynet. Uh, yeah, it's like Terminator <laughs> now. I mean, it's not even it's it's not even funny. I mean, it's Terminator gallows is humor. Fun it's fun when you go back in the future, you know. Back in <laughs> when you go back to the 80s and watch and it. And you watch how it got <laughs> started, but where they came from, Early you know, 90s. this future they came from, where Skynet was there. I don't know if you guys have ever played the game in the bowling alley when they had Terminator 2 in there, but uh, it's it's a trash world where machines uh, pop out of nowhere and uh, will just twist your head off. <laughs> That's pretty terrifying. I well, mean, you know, thank we're not you. Far off from that. I appreciate you coming in and yeah. sitting down to talk with us. No, thank you. I really appreciate the opportunity. And that's it for tonight's InfoWars Nightly News. I'm Melissa Melton, and we hope to see you back again tomorrow at 7 p.m. Central. Have a good evening.